Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Balancing Act. We are so glad you joined us this morning. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. Today, medical advancements. Did you know that every hour, 15 people will suffer a stroke caused by atrial fibrillation, or AFib? And having AFib can put you at five times greater risk of stroke. That's why this morning, we're taking a closer look at what atrial fibrillation is and how it could cause a stroke. What are the signs and symptoms? And even more important, what can you and I do to protect ourselves? Well, how's that resolution to lose weight going? Mm. Well, we've got some tips on how to keep us on track. That's right, there's a science to looking beautiful. Did you know that? There's a science and then some. <laughs> <laughs> All the secrets are coming up on the Balancing Act and we're starting that right now. <laughs> Stay with us. Did you know that more than 2.5 million Americans live with atrial fibrillation or AFib, which is also known as an irregular heartbeat? Now, every hour, 15 people will suffer a stroke caused by AFib. That's why this morning we're taking a closer look at what atrial fibrillation is and how it could increase the risk of a stroke. And even more important, what you and I can do to partner with our doctors to reduce this risk of stroke for ourselves and for our loved ones with AFib. We have very special guests with us this morning. Let's start with Dr. Annabelle Volkman. We also have a patient, Susan Markman, and a caregiver, Lisa Clow. Ladies, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Susan, I'd like to start with you. Let's talk about, and if you could just kind of take me back when you experienced the AFib symptoms, what happened? I woke up in the middle of the night on a Friday night and my chest was throbbing and it felt like it was going like that. Oh my goodness. I kept turning and turning. Nothing made it better. I got up, I walked the floors. Notice I didn't call 911. No, you didn't. Did not. Were didn't wake my husband. I think I was in denial. I, I think I just couldn't react other than in the moment to what I was feeling. I walked the floors the next morning. I called my doctor Saturday morning. Oh my goodness. He asked if I was very stressed and anxious and suggested I go to an urgy care. I went to the urgy care and they thought I had a cold. Two days later, I went to the doctor. He did an EKG in the office. Obviously, I had a fib, and I went right to the hospital. Susan, you are so very lucky. Absolutely. You had no idea nope. you had a fib. Did you nope. even know what it was? I don't think, other than seeing a commercial on television, I had any idea what it was. Nor did I think it could happen to me. Lisa, so lucky, but yet, a unbelievable story here. That's why I always say it's so important to be educated and to call 911 for that matter. Would you agree? Yeah, I think especially from the caregiver perspective, it's so important to be educated because really, even if the AFib is being controlled, the stroke risk is being controlled, anything can happen at any time without warning. So you do have to be aware and educated. My goodness, Dr. Volkman, let me bring you in now. Medically speaking, what is AFib exactly? Atrial fibrillation can be caused by many different things, but atrial fibrillation not caused by a heart valve problem is the most common arrhythmia. Normally, the heart would beat synchronously. Mm -hmm. The upper chamber of the heart beats, and then the lower chamber of the heart contracts. In atrial fibrillation, the upper chambers of the heart no longer contract, and they quiver. And blood clots can form in the heart, and the blood clot in the left atrium can go directly to the brain, causing a stroke. And we have a video which I believe illustrates this point. Let's take a look at this and tell me what's happening here. So in atrial fibrillation, when the heart is no longer contracting, the upper chambers of the heart quiver. The upper chambers of the heart are called the atria. And blood can pool in the heart and cause blood clots, which can break off and go to the brain. Unbelievable. Now, there are some really startling statistics I'd like to share with you. Uh, there's just a few. Number one, having AFib can put people at five times greater risk of stroke than people who don't have AFib. The second one, AFib causes one in every six strokes. And this one, one in three AFib patients will suffer a stroke in their lifetime. Doctor, can you explain to us the different kinds of strokes with AFib? So 90% of patients get what we call ischemic stroke in which a blood clot can form, can break off from the heart and go straight to the brain. And when the blood clot blocks off the blood flow into that part of the brain, 
the brain cells die, and so you lose that function. That's why even a small stroke can be so devastating depending on where in the brain it goes to. So you cannot minimize a blood clot or a stroke in atrial fibrillation because you never know what it, where it's gonna go. And then the other 10% um, of strokes that can occur is the hemorrhagic stroke, mm -hmm. the bleeding stroke, and mm -hmm. those are, um, we always have to weigh the risks and benefits of any drug that we give or any treatment that we give with um, the risks that um, they can have. I also want to emphasize that women are at higher risk of stroke when they have atrial fibrillation. Really? So women should be especially cautious about why, how they get treated for atrial fibrillation. Susan, any advice or what would you tell people out there after what you've been through? Well, anybody watching this would know I needed to do a better job advocating for myself. I needed to call 911. But I think more importantly, it's finding a really good doctor you can communicate with, taking medication as directed and taking it, and eating well and exercising. Great advice. Now, we're not done. I have more questions for you, so please stay right there. When we come back, we're going to talk more about AFib and the risk of stroke. We're also going to discuss some misconceptions regarding AFib and learn how to tell if someone is experiencing the stroke. So stay with us. The Balancing Act will be right back. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking with Dr. Annabel Volgman, patient Susan Markman, and caregiver Lisa Clough. We've learned quite a bit today about AFib and the risk of stroke. Doctor, as we continue to talk about this, you have a great illustration here regarding an eraser and a clot. Can you give us this example here? So a clot as small as a pencil eraser can cause a devastating stroke. So it doesn't have to be big to cause a bad stroke. And some misconceptions I'd like to go over, if you can give me some insight. I have a few. Here's the first one. Can you tell when you have AFib symptoms? Not necessarily. Some people have silent atrial fibrillation. Okay, here's another one. Is the biggest risk of AFib having a heart attack? No, actually a stroke is the biggest risk. Okay, does AFib primarily affect men only? No, women can get atrial fibrillation. As a matter of fact, after the age 75, there are more women who can be affected by AFib. And here's the last one. Does AFib only affect the elderly? No, it does go up with age, but anyone can get atrial fibrillation as an adult. Okay, and how do you determine the risk of a stroke with AFib for a patient? There are certain risk factors that doctors calculate. Um, on a score of zero to nine, we use this, the scoring system called CHADS VASC, okay. which takes into account um, gender. So women have more strokes, so that's an important risk factor. Hypertension, elderly, uh, at age is a risk factor. Having diabetes, having had a stroke is a big risk factor, or a TIA. And then artery disease is another um, risk factor. And what about warning signs? Because I, Susan experienced some, so what are some warning signs to look out for? There's an acronym now that is so easy. It's called FAST, F-A-S-T. You gotta act fast. So okay. F, you ask somebody to smile, and if a part of their face is drooping, one side of their face is drooping, that's a sign of a stroke. Huh. Another, the A is for arm weakness, so go like this, and if your arm, one of the arm moves down, that's another sign of the stroke, hmm. because that's an arm weakness. S is for speech, ask somebody to say a phrase, and if they can't say it right, or if they slur it, that's another sign of a stroke. T is for time to call 911. If any one of your loved ones, or if you're experiencing some, something like that, Call 911, because that's a sign of a stroke. Susan, you're smiling. Great information and so makes you think, right? Right. Unbelievable. Right. Great stuff here. Lisa, we also talked about education and partnering with your doctor. Why is that so important? Well, it's so important for caregivers to be educated, like I said before, because you just don't know even when things are being controlled. Um, it doesn't mean um, the person you're caring for still can't go into AFib or still develop stroke symptoms. And one of the best places, especially women can go to get a lot of free health information about AFib and stroke risk is Women Heart, the National Coalition for Women with Heart Disease. The website is womenheart.org. There, um, there are quite a few um, informational pieces on there that can easily be downloaded. There's also a video that talks about women in AFib and stroke risk. Susan, I wanna end with you uh, on a high note. Some last words from you? Well, truthfully, I feel great. I really do feel well, but when I listen to the information that's here, I hope people are listening, I hope they're aware, 
hope they're paying attention. And if there are any issues, call 911. Thank you all for coming by. I really do appreciate the information, Dr. Lisa Thank and Susan. You. Thank you so much for sharing your personal story. Really do appreciate it. And for more information on these health-related topics, visit us at thebalancingact.com. That's thebalancingact.com. Or let us hear from you. Log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. Welcome to the fifth segment in our six-part series, New Year, New You. Today's focus, maintaining momentum. Back again this morning, Ben Glinsky, the CEO for Skinny Body, and Tandy Caldwell, who has an inspiring weight loss story to share with us. Ben, it's so great to have you back. And Tandy, it is so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, Ben, a person's attitude really affects the outcome and their ability to reach their goals. How does this apply to women who, you know, their goal is to lose weight and then keep it off? Well, we all know that attitude is always important to achieving anything. The challenge with so many women is they've tried 5, 10, 20 different weight loss products and programs, so it's hard to get excited and have a good attitude starting another one. Mm. The exciting thing about this product is that it works. And so once people start using it, and oftentimes they go in skeptical, not expecting it to actually get results since everything else has failed, and then the attitude starts to build and the results accumulate even more. That's great. And Tandy, you've been able to lose weight and keep it off despite challenges, and you've maintained your momentum, which is so great. What do you owe your success to? I owe it to Skinny Fiber. Really? I owe it to the product. If, I've tried everything, and until now, only Skinny Fiber has worked for me. Why do you think that is? Well, it's the easy plan to follow. It's just two capsules before your biggest meals with a glass of water. So it's very simple and easy to use. It's not complicated. That's the key. Ben, what makes this product different from other products on the market, in your opinion? Well, so many people think that the key to losing weight is diet and exercise. And those things are always important to your health. The challenge is, for many people, it's not enough. And that's why so many people struggle. What Skinny Fiber has that very few, if any, other products have is digestive enzymes. Mm. And the reason for that is because our bodies are not always ready to lose that extra weight. In other words, the fat on our body is there for a reason, is to protect us from other health challenges. The digestive enzymes in Skinny Fiber help address those to make losing weight not only possible, but easy. Wow. Now, Tandy, in your opinion, what are some typical struggles and challenges that women face when they're trying to lose weight? I find that for most women, time is the biggest factor. Mm -hmm. they, they're working, they get off late, it's easy to go through and get fast food. Yep. Um, they may not have the support system there uh, to, that they need. And um, I, I think that's probably the biggest issues that women face. Ben, you hear from women, I'm sure, all the time. What is the feedback that you most get about your product? My favorite feedback is when people tell me they've tried everything else on the market, like Tandy, mm -hmm. and nothing else worked, and finally, they're getting results with Skinny Fiber. That's, that's some good feedback. Now, Tandy, I know you've had some real health challenges, and so tell me about that, and then how you were able to incorporate the product into your life. Well, I was born with a heart condition, so that limited my options. Right. Um, I had a heart procedure done, and it did improve my health, but not to the point where I could exercise. I was depressed. I felt horrible, mm. uh, so I began to overeat, um, and I didn't have any energy. So. I saw Skinny Fiber and decided to try it. It was the best decision I ever made because at that point, it got my body ready to lose weight. The first week, I lost a right around 10 pounds. Oh my In goodness. the 90-day challenge, I lost 44 pounds, and I've lost 74 pounds just since I started in June. When I started the product, I was on 12 medications, and I was seeing a cardiologist. So with his supervision, he approved Skinny Fiber. That's amazing. I, it was, and I was just so relieved to find something that I could use, and that see, to see results, to fit into jeans that I wore in high school. It, right. was, it was amazing. Well, that is a success story if I've ever heard one. Ben, so important, how can people find Skinny Fiber? 
Well, we have distributors all over the world. If you know someone who sells Skinny Fiber, you can certainly order through them. Otherwise, we've set up a website specific for your viewers called SkinnyFiberOnTV.com. You can go there, place an order, and get started. Thank you both. So great to have you with us today. Okay, stay motivated, ladies. Never give up on your important weight loss goals. Visit us at thebalancingact.com. Of course, we always love to hear from you. Share your weight loss successes and your concerns. Log on to Facebook forward slash The Balancing Act fans. So much good information on today's show. Be sure to check out our website, thebalancingact.com as well. There's lots there for you. And don't forget about Facebook and Twitter. Look us up there. And we hope to see you again very soon. And remember to always find your balance. So long, everybody.